Thank you. Tony, if Jesus, peace be, up, be upon him, was God, who was he praying to? And if Jesus was God, could God be tempted by the devil? Because in the Bible, Jesus was tempted by Satan for 40 days. Yeah, this question is, uh, is similar to the, to the previous one in that, again, <clears throat> Christians, when they speak of Jesus, they believe that Jesus was the eternal Word of God incarnate in the flesh and that he was truly God, truly man at the same time. Uh, if he was God, who is he praying to? As a man, uh, Jesus lived, he, he got hungry, he got thirsty, he, he felt pain, he mourned, he cried, he got tired, and as a man he also prayed. And um, to understand this, I guess the best way to understand this is if, if you read Paul's letter to the Philippians, Paul discusses uh, what Christians call the kenosis, where Jesus, where, the, where this, this word, this eternal word, uh, empties himself and takes on the form of a servant or a slave. And that as a man, he humbles himself even to the point of death. So as a man, yes, he prayed. He spoke of God as his God, as my Father, my Lord, your Lord, my God, your God. Uh, could God be tempted by the devil? No. But uh, the man Jesus definitely was tempted by the devil. So again, it's, uh, you have to realize that when we speak of Jesus, we're speaking of, of both the divine and the human together. It's not just the divine, not just the human, but both divine and human at the same time. So uh, we have to uh, avoid making the, uh, the categorical fallacy. The, uh, the only way I can explain this, and, and some theologians have made the connection, is that in Islam, the concept of uh, the, the, the word, the kalimat, the word of God, the kalimatullah, is that the word of God is eternal. And that whereas in Islam, the word of God becomes a book, in Christianity, the word of God becomes a person, Jesus. And just as the Word of God is eternal, Muslims believe that the, the Word of God contained in the Quran is eternal. But it came down, as they believe, uh, and delivered by the angel Jibreel. But the book I have before me is, is it's a book of paper, of ink. It's created. But the words therein, Muslims believe to be eternal. So in the same way with Jesus, He is the eternal Word of God, and He became flesh. He became limited in His humanity. Thank you. Um, I'll be entertaining one last question, and I guess it'll be open to both of them. Okay, this will basically be a response from okay. each speaker. Why did both speakers ignore the independent historical accounts like that the whole idea of the Trinity, divinity of Jesus was invented by Roman pagans? Christian rationalist thinkers like John Locke, Isaac Newton, and others had outlined this. Why was this overlooked? I will pass it on to... Well, the subject matter tonight is what we needed to, to uh, focus on uh, carefully uh, and not to lose sight of. The, the subject matter, for example, was, was not the, whether the Quran is accurate or not. Remember, the question is, uh, the image of Jesus in Christianity and Islam which is the historical truth here? Which is the true historical Jesus? So the Quran might have been wrong, for example, but if it is right about the image of Jesus, that is the question tonight. Is it right or wrong about the image of Jesus that it presents? It may not even be the Word of God, but what about what it says about Jesus? Does it give us the true image of Jesus or not? There was a real historic Jesus, and now there is a report about him or a belief about him. Is that belief true? or not. It's not whether the Quran was true or not. So anyone who spoke about the Quran or introduced that actually went off topic. I tried my best not to go off topic and this is why I did not try to discuss the Trinity. Uh, it, it is not the night tonight for Trinity bashing. And that might be another debate when we talk about what the Trinity is. But if, since the question is asked, what exactly is the Trinity and why not? It's not only John Locke and other Christian thinkers, but even mo in modern times, modern Christian scholars are moving away from the idea of the Trinity. You can see from Tony answers that it is not easy to explain how Jesus can be both man and God at the same time because if he was both man and God at the same time he could have prayed to himself the man in him could have prayed to the God in him but obviously he wasn't doing that you see it is very difficult to speak about the Trinity or the incarnation of Jesus if you say he emptied himself and became a man well that means he was no longer God but then if he was no longer God then how can you call Jesus God 
If he was still God, then why was he praying to someone else? If he died on the cross as man only, then he didn't do anything for himself because he was God before. He took on human body. He gave up the human body. He didn't lose anything for us. So where is the love of God and where is the sacrifice? He didn't lose anything. So the Trinity is not a defensible position. It is not scriptural and it is not reasonable. Like